Well, hello again, Professor Howe here, and today we're going to grind a turning tool bit, a tool bit for our lathe. So you will have, of course, a print to go by. So here we have our high-speed steel tool bit. Happens to be 3 8 by 3 8 by about 3 inches long. There is an angle ground on either end of our tool bit. That allows us to use that uh, to our advantage. In this case, we will. And I'm going to take this tool bit that's already been ground, and I'm going to label the way that I do it here. Uh, so typically, this is the uh, end. If you were on the opposite side of the machine, you would see. And I usually do that first, followed by if I were at the headstock watching this tool come towards me, I typically grind this side second and the top third. Doesn't mean you have to do it this way, but it may allow you uh, as a beginner to just uh, uh, watch along at the video and see how we do this. So our safety guidelines for using a pedestal grinder will be um, talked about in the class and we perhaps may develop another video for that. So the safety aspects would have been done before um, we climb on to or uh, get a chance to use our grinder. All right, so as a reminder, anytime we start the pedestal grinder, we always want to step to the side. We're always hopeful that no one has touched the wheel or banged it and perhaps introduced any cracks or anything. So I'm going to stand to the side and bring our grinder up to speed. So with the grinder going, notice that this tool bit does have an angle and so they cut a forward angle and a rearward angle. This allows us um, to make use of it if we want to and I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start grinding and I'm going to cut along this edge here. I can draw a line if I want uh, and again this is the top. So here we go. Not only do I want to take advantage of this angle here, but I also want to position my hand so that I can have some clearance angle here. As I'm grinding this high speed steel, notice I have one finger supporting that tool bit. And so as I grind away, I'm using the wheel to provide us the relief that we need. As I watch those sparks dance across the top of the tool bit, I can tell when I've ground all the way across because I see the sparks dancing on this top. We're almost there. There's just a tiny bit of a corner that hasn't been touched so far. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna cool this again and I will go in and just grind that last little bit. Okay, so we're pretty good here. As you can see, there's a little uh, heat introduced into the uh, high-speed steel tool bit. And I want to be careful, if I do introduce too much, then I can change the material, uh, and uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it more brittle or softer. So I'm trying to keep that as cool as I can and still get the job done. So this is clearance. This is, of course, where our cutting action would happen. And as you see, this is where we labeled the top. Now that I have ground this first side, I'm going to take my plate protractor and see how we did. We should have an angle of about 8 to 10 degrees. And we come up pretty darn close. We're a little better than 7, 7 and a half. So for the moment, I'm going to leave that. Some of these angular um, figures, well, if we're off a little bit, that's okay. Um, there's some things that are critical, but this is pretty close. Now we're going to grind side two. So I'm going to start up my machine. Notice I'm on the other side. I find that this is a more convenient place for me to grind this particular aspect of the tool. Again, I've got one finger underneath and I'm moving my tool bit slightly, just rocking it back and forth, trying to remain steady. This is where I set the length 
for for the distance that I've ground this tool bit back and I'll match my other side to this distance here. Of course, we're starting to grind towards the bottom where most of the material has to go away and there is some clearance that we have to have here. the wheel again to expose some new sharp grains that will help our grinding process to go a little bit faster. So I'm gently pushing my dressing uh, wheel here against the grinding wheel, just trying to expose new grains and break off the old grains. So we're doing pretty well. We've got part of this tool ground, again, most of it towards the bottom. Soon we'll come up across this edge. So we're providing ourselves a nice amount of clearance here. So I do want to point out, as I'm grinding, if I were of the stock in the machine, this is the angle that I would see, you may be able to see that there's just a very small amount that hasn't been ground on this very end. If I look down the operator's view when I'm, uh, when I'm using this tool, I have a couple of degrees, two to three degrees here that will be, become more visible in a moment and I'm very, just very slightly touching this edge because I really don't want to take much off this very tip. Okay. So now we've ground that all the way and I think we have enough clearance here. We'll have to see. We may go back in and add a little bit more. Now we're ready to start uh, our last, which would be our back rake and our clearance there. So we've taken off our uh, safety shield just so that we can get the shot. You'll notice the grinder is not turning. It's important the position of my tool bit. Notice that I am at an angle here. I'm not straight on. This is straight on. This is at an angle. I do want to get some good back relief uh, because I want my chip to come off of that tool bit and uh, be bent down the kind of the long ramp and be snapped away um, so that we don't uh, have a continuous chip but we have discontinuous broken small chips. I'm also rotating. I don't know if you can see it in this shot. I'm also rotating so I grind more off of this side and really not much off of here. Eventually we'll grind this back. So see how that's, it's all in how you hold it and the position too on the wheel. Well here we are grinding side three. And it does take a little bit of practice. I know that this isn't the first tool bit I've ground. It does take some time. I don't have my finger underneath. I'm sort of suspending this. And as I go, I'm sort of looking at what kind of grinding I'm doing. Notice that I've ground more here because I have this tool bit. I want the, I want the relief to come back. I also have it tipped on the side, and it's getting kind of warm. So I'm kind of analyzing as I go as to how things look. 
on this particular grinder, there are two different wheels, and so you've seen me go from a fine wheel to a coarse wheel. I just find that the position that I stand relative to the grinder helps me to do a better job. So I, I'm a little bit more uh, forgiving on this side because this is a finer wheel. So uh, see how we're starting to take away on this side. I'm leaving the point till last. And if I tip this way, you'll notice I have some relief, this being the top, the high point, uh, and you see it goes down, okay? All right, I'm starting to see, see how I'm starting to get a little brown there? I have been good about dipping it into the, um, into the water and cooling it down, but that's also an indication that our wheel is starting to get loaded up. So we're gonna go and do a little dressing real quick and then we'll start again with the grinding. We just dressed the wheel and here we go. We're back at it. And I just cleaned that surface off um, I do see that I may have to go back and touch this side. We'll look again. No, I think we're okay. So now that we have our tool bit ground, we can certainly check the angles. Now that we have this ground, our edge, our cutting edge is going to be somewhat fragile because it's a very sharp point right now. We're gonna take this over to the uh, honing stone and we're gonna put a little radius on there and, uh, and soften this. It'll actually do some better finishing work for us and it'll protect that point. So here we are uh, on our workbench with our honing stone. And there are two different sides to this stone. We have the coarse side out, this is our finer side. And you'll notice you can see a film of oil there. What we really want to do is get a nice radius from one side to the other. We'll look at that on the optical comparator so you can see it up close. Uh, it would be great if I could radius this from here all the way to here in one motion. It's pretty hard to do. You'll find that your wrist doesn't quite work that way. So we're going to get the majority of it. And it may take multiple passes. We want something maybe a little greater than 10,000. Somewhere around 10 to 15 thousandths radius would be great. So because I'm not quite getting it all, I'm gonna take some short motions and try to get that radius wrapped all the way to this side. And likewise from the start, I'm gonna try to get that from here because the general motion doesn't quite wrap that radius all the way around. It's actually amazing that we can grind these high-speed tool bits and they work amazingly well in all kinds of materials. They're certainly not as tough as carbides, but they hold an edge pretty well. So in a moment, we're gonna take a look at our tool bit magnified on the optical comparator. So here we are in our optical comparator. We're looking at the radius that we've put on with the stone and it wraps pretty well from this surface to this surface over here. It looks like we've got enough radius for that tool bit to work pretty well. So here's our tool bit, and as we've seen on the optical comparator, we have put a nice radius on this side, and of course this is the top, and when we machine, we'd machine in this direction, and that's how we grind a high-speed steel tool bit.